everyone. We will start in one minute. Jin, can you record? Her? Okay, sure. I'll start to record. Okay. Good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Thank you for calling my streaming again. So today, let's move from UK to Netherlands. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Luke. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Good morning or good afternoon for you guys all. Thank you again for joining us. For the Netherlands today, I have with me Anita and Kim, both based out of the Amsterdam office. Kim actually is physically in the office, which is open for a few people, so she's there with two other people in the whole office. Um, and uh, Anita is joining us from her home in Rotterdam. So I'll share the presentation. Start. Everybody can see it? Yes. Perfect, thank you. So to start with, I've already gone over the team yesterday, so I'm not going to repeat myself. If you hadn't had a chance to join yesterday and you do have any questions about it, just you can ask me at the end or um, send me a message privately afterwards and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. As I mentioned in terms of the team, today I have Kim and Anita with me, who you'll see on the right hand side. So let's start straight away with the Netherlands. It's got some great international flight connections. It's very compact, which means that if your hotel is somewhere based not in Amsterdam, you would still be easily accessible to get there by coach for a day trip. And you can uh, easily travel around the whole country. Amsterdam is the top 10 most important commercial center in the world. It's got a wide selection of cultural entertainment. They're very well known for their hospitality, obviously the vibrant capital. They have over 100 Michelin star restaurants in the Netherlands, and it does have the largest museum density in the world. So to give you the overview of how we'll run this webinar, very similar to the one yesterday. Kim will go over some of the challenges in the Netherlands, but also in Amsterdam. I'm assuming a lot of you will be aware of those already. Then we've put together one three-day itinerary and a few day excursions from Amsterdam, and then some extra activities to go over in terms of team building. We'll give you an overview of venues, hotels and restaurants, some information about the coaches, some branded gift options, and then a showcase of some of the projects we've done um, these last few years in, in the Netherlands, and then we'll head to our Q&A section. So I will pass the word over to Kim, who will start the presentation. Thank you, Annalene. General challenges in the Netherlands are that restaurants within city limits are quite small. There are also limited Asian and halal restaurants. Our top high season is the tulip season when the Keukenhof is open from the half of March until the half of May every year. With a note that Amsterdam, uh, before the coronavirus, was year-round very busy with high hotel rates. Uh, the Netherlands is a small country, which is ideal to see many places in a short time. However, the itinerary challenges that we have been facing the past years are limited coast access in city centers and the time spent during the, uh, for walking from the coach park to uh, the sightseeing points. In Amsterdam, we are facing guiding challenges. Uh, when you look at the top map, you see a black line. This area within is the Kennel District. Uh, all sightseeing groups in this area uh, from four persons need a licensed guide. Maximum group uh, size per guide is 15 persons. 
all tours should be done between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. Guides are, um, groups are not um, allowed to block busy streets or shops. Speakers, megaphones, shouting is not allowed. Uh, on both maps, you see the red streets. Uh, those are the red light districts. Uh, these streets are prohibited um, for groups. Um, when we have a look at the Coach City Centre for, um, uh, for the coach uh, access, the green lines are the mandatory routes for the touring cars and the blue dots are the mandatory stops for coaches at this moment. Um, this map um, will be reviewed uh, this summer by the City Council because they will make a new plan for the coming five years. Um, you see that many city centre hotels Hotels do not have a coach uh, drop-off in front of the hotel. A solution would be to use smaller mini coaches uh, to have a greater city uh, center reach or luggage fans um, for the client's convenience. To give our clients some ideas uh, what we can do in the Netherlands, we compose an itinerary for three days. The first day is a full day in the capital Amsterdam, which has many historic buildings, beautiful museums and canals to enjoy a boat tour on. The second day we would like to offer Volendam and Marken. These are fishermen villages with old harbors, timber houses and the inhabitants sometimes wear traditional uh, clothing. The third day we will visit Rotterdam. This is the second biggest city in the Netherlands. The city uh, is the complete uh, opposite of Amsterdam. Uh, Rotterdam has a modern uh, city centre with many iconic uh, architecture, like the Erasmus Bridge, the Cube Houses and Covered Market Hall. On the next slide, you will see the detailed itinerary per day. We start with a, a guided city tour of Amsterdam. First, we will see some sightseeing points by coach and the group will get off at the Museum Square. Uh, the group will be divided into smaller groups to continue the sightseeing tour by foot or visit um, one of the famous museums on the square. Depending on the group, we can offer a city tour in a fun way with a quiz. Uh, then the uh, group will be divided in teams. Uh, they will receive tasks and questions. The team will, with the best score, will of course get a prize. Uh, after this, the group will have lunch in a restaurant or the group can have lunch on a canal boat. Um, a boat through, a tour through the canals in Amsterdam is an absolute must. Uh, the boats can access places which you normally would not see and the view from the canal houses is, from a boat is really spectacular. Uh, canal boats have a maximum capacity of 75 to 100 persons or we can uh, arrange smaller luxurious uh, salon boats. Uh, a cruise takes around one hour. It is also possible to hire a boat for a transfer in the city center uh, due to the difficult uh, coach situation in Amsterdam. Uh, the group can disembark in front of the ADEM lookout. This is an observatory desk with a deck uh, with a uh, great panoramic uh, view over Amsterdam. They have a swing uh, at 100 meters high uh, and it will take you over the edge of the building. The next is the ADEM, uh, next to the ADEM lookout stands, this is Holland. This is a 5D flying experience over the Netherlands. I did it myself and before going I was a bit reserved what to think about it, but I really loved it. You have the flying that you're flying uh, over the Netherlands uh, and you have the smell of the flowers in the wind through your hair. Um, the capacity per flight is 40 persons. Um, and in the evening uh, later, we, the group will have dinner in Amsterdam. The second day, we will drive to the peninsula uh, village Marken. This is 30 minutes from Amsterdam. Marken is a fisherman's village with a unique scenery and uh, little wooden houses. Uh, for your information, regular groups start in Volendam and then continue to Marken. This is why we would like to offer in our itinerary to start in Marken. Then the group have a lot of um, time to take nice photos without too many tourists in their shots. From Marken, we take a public ferry or a private charter to Volendam for a guided walking tour. 
Um, Volendam is bigger than Marken, uh, as Volendam is located on the main land. Families uh, who live in Volendam have done so for many generations. This is why many people in Volendam have the last name Smith. The eel smoke house that we will visit is called Smith Bokum. Um, this smoke house has been passed on by generations for 160 years. Uh, during the tour, uh, the group will learn all about the world of eel and the Dutch tradition of smoking it. The guided tour can be extended by, um, um, by snacks and refreshments. From Volendam, the guests um, can have a cycling through, tour uh, to uh, the cheese farm. Uh, cycling is well known in the Netherlands. It is very nice and safe to do this on the roads outside of Amsterdam, so on the flat countryside, as there's not too much uh, traffic. We can offer this with regular bikes, e-bikes, or even scooters. Uh, after all this excitement, the crew can enjoy their lunch at the cheese farm. Here we can also arrange many activities like clock and cheese making, uh, clock dancing, a tour on the farm, uh, team building activities like farmer golf. And in the evening, the group will have dinner again in Amsterdam. On the third day, the group will drive to Rotterdam via a flower farm. Between the cities Haarlem and Leiden is a stretch of 20 miles of bulb farms. Um, we can raise a visit to a farm where the group uh, can have a tour and take photos in the flower fields. The tulip uh, fields are in uh, bloom from the mid of March until the mid of May. Um, later on, other flower bloom uh, like Dalida's. Uh, the farm can handle a group of max 80 persons per visit. Uh, we will continue to drive to Rotterdam for a guided tour and a lunch. Uh, Rotterdam is very accessible for touring cars. Most sightseeing points can be reached by a coach. Uh, as informed, Rotterdam has many iconic landmarks. One of the newest is the Markt Hall. It's a covered market. If you look at the top photos, you see a great arch. In this arch, um, there are actually apartments where local people live. On the ground floor, there is a massive uh, market with different stands. Uh, what we can do, we can offer our groups a full market uh, hall experience by handing out booklets with coupons so the, guides, uh, so the guests can uh, wander around in the indoor market and just take whatever they like with their uh, coupons. Uh, Rotterdam has the biggest harbor in Europe uh, without a speed limit on the water. So for our thrill-seeking groups, we can arrange a speedboat tour. For the speedboats, um, you have really great view uh, over the Erasmus Bridge, the Hotel New York, the harbor, the cruise ship SS Rotterdam. Such a tour takes around 45 minutes and a speedboat uh, has a capacity of 12 persons. But we, of course, we can arrange uh, many more. Um, then the coach will uh, return to Amsterdam, uh, where everybody um, can get changed for the gala dinner. We uh, would like to, uh, we can offer, of course, many kinds of gala dinners, uh, many kinds of gala uh, venues. Uh, we would like to highlight two of them. The first one is the Garnum of Amsterdam. It's a unique green uh, event uh, location with a ceiling full of flowers and hanging plants. The venue can handle up to 900 uh, people sit down, uh, but we can also make uh, the area smaller uh, for like 100 persons with a movable uh, plant walls. Uh, a total different ve venue would be the Wester Gas Factory in Amsterdam. This area is a renovated 19th century industrial complex. Uh, nowadays, very hip and many locals enjoy the food and the drinks in this area. There is a big silo called the Gashouder, where we can host a seated dinner up to 1,100 guests. Now, Annette will continue with some excursions. Yes, uh, thank you, Kim. Uh, so, for the first uh, option, for the excursion, we would departure from uh, Amsterdam uh, and then heading to the national park uh, called uh, Hoge Veluwe, that is famous for uh, its beautiful uh, heat and uh, wildlife. 
And in the afternoon, group would be transferred to a shopping outlet where uh, all the fashion lovers uh, can enjoy high-end brands uh, for up to 70% uh, discount. At the end of the day, a group uh, returns uh, back to Amsterdam. Then the second option for the excursion is heading all the way to the south of the country to Maastricht. Uh, Maastricht is uh, one of the oldest uh, cities uh, in Holland. It is around two and a half hours uh, drive. On the way back to Amsterdam, it is possible uh, to visit the Roermond uh, shopping village uh, to have some uh, free time over there. And then in the evening, uh, we would return um, back to Amsterdam. Then uh, the last excursion I would like to highlight is um, visiting unknown part of Holland, uh, which is called uh, Friesland. Uh, it is uh, the only province that uh, has its own official uh, language. It's known for uh, amazing uh, landscapes uh, and picturesque uh, villages. Uh, then we return to Amsterdam via the most famous and 32 kilometers long dike. Now I will talk you through uh, each option in more detail. So for the first uh, option of the excursion, we would start the day with driving through the countryside uh, to the national park and the museum that is located uh, inside the park. Hoge Velve, it is a great uh, place to combine activities in the nature with the art experience because of the museum located in the park. It is possible to organize a biking tour through the park uh, with a stop for a lunch or picnic. Uh, you can have the lunch boxes uh, delivered to the park as well. Uh, after that, group would visit parks museum called uh, Krullemuller, which is considered the uh, second largest collection of Van Gogh in the world. Then uh, after the visit to National Park, a uh, group would continue to a uh, shopping outlet and then uh, enjoy some afternoon uh, with visiting the stores with the high-end uh, brands. For very large groups, we can organize a welcome room uh, with the red carpet and the hostesses. In addition, it is possible to arrange a goodie bags uh, with the shopping guide, uh, discount vouchers, uh, etc. Then uh, during the second excursion, group starts the day uh, with the sightseeing of Maastricht and then continue to uh, Falkenburg for cave biking experience. It is a guided biking tour, 40 meters under the ground and 8 kilometers road uh, of the mix of narrow corridors and large open spaces. Uh, this activity uh, requires a certain mobility level from participants, so it is important to make sure a client is aware of it. After the cave biking, uh, you can relax uh, the rest of the afternoon and then enjoy some shopping time at uh, Ruhrmund outlet, which is located nearby Maastricht. Uh, you can find their um, most famous designer brands like uh, Gucci, Prada or Dolce & Gabbana. It is optional to uh, decide to have lunch inside the outlet uh, where you can find variety of restaurants and uh, cafes. For the last excursion, a uh, group uh, would travel to province of uh, Friesland and then start their day with visiting the oldest and still functioning steam pumping station in the world. Uh, the main job uh, of the pumping station is to pump uh, excess of water from uh, Friesland to the sea. Uh, it delivers a major contribution within the Frisian water system, has a special architecture and a unique application of uh, steam power. A group, will, a group will discover all of it during the guided tour. And then the next uh, stop for this excursion is Hindelopen. It is a picturesque village, uh, which is known for its traditional costumes, typical painting and wooden bridges. It is possible to organize a walking tour um, with the local guide that is dressed in a traditional costume, which you can now see uh, on the slide, uh, a lady. 
Then another option is a visit to the house of one of the last uh, Hinderloper painters who is demonstrating his craftsmanship, which you can also see um, in the left corner, a picture of it. Uh, then after the Hindel open uh, in, uh, in the afternoon, uh, there will be some time for lunch. Uh, we offer a lunch at traditional Dutch pancake restaurant. And then after that, as the last attraction in Friesland, the uh, group uh, will have a chance to look inside the oldest planetarium in the world. A uh, fun fact to know is that all the planets, stars, sun and moon in the planetarium, they move exactly as they do in reality and they have been doing this for more than 225 years. Then on the way back to Amsterdam, uh, we would include the photo stop at the most famous uh, dike and the dike is 32 kilometers long. It is a perfect spot for uh, to have some free time uh, to climb the tower, which you can see on the slide and take some uh, breathtaking pictures of the dike. So uh, those were our ideas uh, for the excursions uh, in the Netherlands. And now Kim will briefly talk you through the uh, possible uh, activities options. Thank you, Aneta. As a summer team building activity, we can organize beach games like beach volleyball or beach soccer. It is possible to organize these activities in different parts of the Netherlands, for example, near Amsterdam or Den Haag, to capture the real beach feeling. We can extend this uh, with a barbecue for lunch or dinner. Um, in case of the beach games in Den Haag, uh, this can be combined with 50 meters high ferris wheel you can see a picture of it on the bottom uh, a flight on this ferris wheel uh, takes around 15 minutes uh, and there are uh, 34 gondolas per gondola uh, for person uh, fit uh, for a winter activity we can, would like to offer uh, ice skating uh, which is considered dutch heritage a perfect way to discover ice skating is by attacking it in a workshop and then see after this uh, who's the farther, fastest in a short race. Uh, the group uh, will be divided in um, maximum 16 persons per instructor uh, and there can be a maximum of four instructors uh, per hour on the ice rink. For a slower activity, we can organize a curling clinic, which is an uh, uh, Olympic sport where teams sweep rocks at a red dot. Uh, they can, this can be uh, organized for maximum 80 persons. Another fun activity is the sloops game, which is an interactive team build, uh, battle on little boats through the Amsterdam canals. Each team receives a tablet with instructions on how to proceed the game. The team will sail to the location and they need to answer questions and do assignments. Uh, it's not only a great team building activity, but also a different way to see the city. Um, um, it's an, a playful alternative uh, to the typical kennel cruise. The game takes about three hours and we can arrange this for a maximum of 250 persons. An activity for the late afternoon or evening would be a cocktail workshop at the House of Bowls. The um, group will learn about cocktails, liquor and bartending. During this interactive location, you will uh, learn about the Dutch company Lucas Bowls. This is the oldest spirit brand in the world. And you will have a chance to try the Dutch, typical uh, Dutch drink, uh, which is called Geneva. Uh, the House of Bowls visit and the workshop are both uh, one hour. Uh, a maximum um, group during this time would be 72 persons. Uh, on the following slides, uh, you will see two evening activities. First is the private pub crawl that will take you to several different places in Amsterdam with a free welcome shot at each pub. Uh, the pop crawl um, normally lasts around five hours, but of course this can be uh, shortened. An alternative to the pop crawl is to hire your private cafe, where you can, uh, where we can arrange beer tastings or a brewery workshop, like making your own label or how to tap your own beer for your, from your tap table. Uh, these activities can be done for large uh, groups. For something totally different, we can arrange a hot air balloon ride. 
departures uh, are possible from different locations in the Netherlands. The group will be divided over many balloons with a, a capacity of 100 persons per timing. This can be done twice a day, uh, so per day we can do this for 600 people. The flight takes around one hour and it can be done during the day or the evening, but it depends on the weather conditions. The last activity I would like to mention a visit to the Fort Island, which is located 30 minutes from Amsterdam. They have plenty of team building activities uh, there and you have like your own private island then. A um, large group um, until 600 people we can do this for. Uh, acti activities will be uh, custom made uh, depending on the wishes of the group. Um, team buildings can include uh, rifle shooting, uh, balance beam, catapult building, laser game and many more. Um, Anna Lane will now continue with the venues. Thank you, Kim. I'm taking back. So, a brief overview, an important fact to note. Um, as Kim already mentioned, venues within the Canal District might have limitations on coach drop-offs as well, same as the hotels. So they may require some walking from the coach drop-off to the venue itself. Centrally located venues do come at a higher budget. So the bigger, the, so if any group is more budget conscious, we need to look at venues outside of the city center. The bigger the group is, also the higher the budget, as only there's a limited options over a certain PAX number within Amsterdam. In terms of lower budget venue selections, a lot of these are traditionally used as um, Asian wedding venues, so they're all located in the suburbs outside of the city center, but they are very flexible. We can do uh, any type of external catering, bringing in there without uh, an extra cost. A lot of these will even allow us to bring in our own drinks. There's a good capacity for those uh, from smaller venues, around 200 people up to 1,000 people seated in one venue in an open spaces. For intermediate budgets, we have a good selection within the city centre. There's so many different options in Amsterdam. Um, a lot of the older churches have been repurposed for venues, um, which gives a really nice feel to them. And they have a very large capacity as well. So you can do old churches up to 350 people for seated dinner. We can look into other historical buildings, hotel ballrooms, or more industrial uh, and factory buildings capacities up to 800 people for seated dinners. If you are thinking of adding a, a bigger stage, obviously this will reduce the capacity a lot. One thing to note is a lot of the venues within the city centre of Amsterdam, they will have their preferred or fixed partners for AV or, or sound equipment. So if uh, somebody is, is considering bringing their own uh, AV partners from your country is then we need to know in advance to see if this would even be feasible in the venues or we would have to look at alternate venues. In the higher budget option, there's some spectacular venues. Uh, the garden venue, which Kim already mentioned, they are incredibly nice to do. It gives a very Dutch feel to it. We could even have tulips in winter season as long as we give enough notice and then they would specifically grow the tulips for your group. We can do them in specific colors if you'd want to do the company colors or the, the brand colors for them. The museums, the, the Maritime Museum can take up to 800 people for a seated dinner. Um, and as mentioned, there's quite a few other industrial options there that we can use as well. So it does give, there's all kind of different uh, feelings that we could add. One thing to note as well is because uh, Netherlands is so compact, we can easily do a gala dinner outside of Amsterdam and look at Hilversum or Amersfoort, which is still all within a 40, 45 minute drive. It can easily be done. If you have a very large group or we have groups that want to do a gala dinner and uh, a conference during the day and a gala dinner in the same venue, but not necessarily in the same hall, we can look at these extremely large venue selections. Um, great variety of options. A lot of these will be uh, black box, so they can be completely tailored to your client's liking. 
again, as mentioned, we can easily go outside of Amsterdam within uh, an hour's drive and look at venues in Utrecht or even in, in Rotterdam to get the group out of Amsterdam for a day. So next up, we will head to the hotel section. Few key points. As Dennis mentioned yesterday for our UK webinar, we'd recommend to always send a request to us first. We will liaise and discuss with hotel procurement for the best options to match the group's requirements. We've been to a lot of hotels ourselves with our group, so we know what works, which ones don't work, or which ones would work in the itinerary. So whatever you do, don't vote from the system allocations as those rates won't apply for MICE groups and they can create issues later on. It may also reduce the chances of getting more rooms if the groups increase and you may look at, have to look at splitting the groups over various different hotels, which <clears throat> will make it even more complicated for the logistical feature. A quick map. So just to highlight again what Kim mentioned in the challenges in the beginning of the webinar, centrally located hotels within the canal district. They may be great for participants in the evening, but they do create a logistical challenge for the coaches due to coach restrictions for drop-off and pickups. And these restrictions will be tightened again over the summer. Centrally located hotels, they also will come at a higher price tag. So for more budget conscious groups, we recommend to consider Schiphol, the airport region, or even the Hague, Utrecht, Leeuwenhorst, because the Netherlands is so compact, it's all still within an easy driving distance from Amsterdam to do some easy excursions. To give you a brief overview, Mervenpick actually is a perfect hotel because it's still within a reasonable walking distance to Dam Square. And it's located right next to the passenger terminal, which means that the coaches can go around the back of the hotel to pick up the groups, which is in a covered area. They do have one challenge, which is a limited number of lifts. So if you have a large group and they're all arriving at the same time, you may have some people having to wait in the lobby to go up to the rooms. Novotel, Hotel, they can take very large groups as well in twins. And they're very flexible in terms of accommodation. Coach drop-off is reasonably easy. And the area around there is quite easy for coach uh, parking in the evening, so the coach would never be too far away. <clears throat> Same issue as the movement peak it does have a limited number of lifts so again if you have a very large group all at the same time wanting to go up to their rooms they may have to wait a bit for the, the, the rooms to come the hotel in itself as i mentioned it's very flexible they also allow uh, external catering in the in the ballrooms or in the banquet rooms so we can add specific items to breakfast areas Renaissance, very nice hotel located right in the Canal District. At the moment, it still does have a drop-off in front of the hotel. However, it's been under discussion for over a year now, so it's, it's uncertain if that will stay. The new hotel since this year, Enhau Amsterdam, next to the Rye, and also really close by the North Hotel. It's got 250 twins, so it's a great capacity. 650 rooms in total. Their meeting room capacity is very limited to 280 because they would expect any larger groups to use the, the RAI conference center as uh, meeting options. In terms of five-star hotels, the Akora is an amazing hotel, very spectacular. The only downside is that it's only got 29 twins. It's got a really large banquet room and the drop-off is right in front of the entrance. The NH Barbizon made a nice, very, well located right uh, close to the central station and easily walking distance from the Dam Square. The drop-off will be, the group will need to cross a little street and a cycle lane. So if they, if with luggage, um, we'd need to definitely consider adding Portridge and do this. Hilton again, is completely refurbished last year. Only got 50 twins though. It's a little bit outside of the main canal district so walking this into the dam square area would be a bit further away and then one the last one to note is the conservatorium absolutely gorgeous hotel very contemporary design but it does only have 12 twins it is however great if you've got some real vips that are traveling with their family and that don't mind sharing it's got a, the rooms are a little bit larger than the normal size and they all have a little bit of a different feel to them <coughs> For restaurants, Kim already mentioned some of the challenges here. 
Smaller cities in the Netherlands may not have a large capacity for Asian restaurants. However, the three main cities that we're suggesting, Amsterdam, The Hague and Rotterdam, they do have uh, large options. It may be a limited Chinese cuisine, so if you're looking for Thai or for um, different options, then you might struggle a little there. Indonesian, obviously, is uh, very popular in the Netherlands, so that would not be a problem to, buy, to find a high quality there, but the restaurants would not necessarily take, be able to take over uh, 150 people. For halal restaurants in the Netherlands, very similar to what Dennis mentioned yesterday for the UK session as well. If you're looking for pure halal and you and the restaurant may not serve alcohol and pork, then you're limited to Indian or Turkish restaurants. The local restaurants may be able to offer halal meat, but then the kitchen and the restaurant would not be strict halal and they will still serve the normal alcohol, which would be at the bar and which would be in full view for all the groups arriving. So if that's a must, then we would need to know quite early on. Within the city centers of the main cities like Amsterdam or The Hague, there's limited options for extremely large groups, especially if you want them all to sit on the same level. This is due to the historical buildings in the city centers, which obviously works more up than they work in the, in the wider aspect. Exclusive use of a restaurant will not necessarily reduce costs because they will apply minimum spends, even if you don't need it to be a completely exclusive use over a certain number of packs, they will automatically consider it a private hire. So that's something to bear in mind. Lower budget venues, which I mentioned before in a venue overview, they will not be within the city center, so they will require extra transfer time um, to use. If you think you have groups over 700 people and Hotel ballrooms might be an option because you want them all in the city center. There's only the one, which is in the Krasnopolsky Adam Square. It does take 700 people, but if you want to add a stage, it will not have a clear view of the stage for every single person because it does go a little bit in an L shape. So the options are a bit more restricted. And if you do want a group over 700 people all in the same venue with a clear view of the stage, then we'd have to look at the lower budget venues or the intermediate budget venues which uh, would be the only ones that would be able to take them all on the same level. <clears throat> Four coaches. Contiki, our key supplier for my coaches. These last few months, there's been, oh, this last year, this have been the main one that we've been using. Only extremely positive feedback about the coaches and about every single driver we've used. Contiki is Trafco owned but they operate as a separate entity, very much like we have City Circle in the UK, which is JTB owned, but they still work with our competitors and they work very independently. By far, this company does provide the best service for coaches and I'm, I'm confident to say they provide, they, for me, they've been the best company I've worked with through any country. If it, however, is a problem that they're Trafco owned, you would need to let us know from the start so we can look at alternative providers. As Dennis mentioned on the UK webinar, again, rates always need to be checked. Send it to us and we will liaise with uh, Roberta from the Long Distance Coaching Company. We prefer to work from the Long Distance Coaching base and we cooperate them with very, very closely with the team. The rates do depend on the season and the number of coaches required. This company is very flexible and they will always do our best to help us. So they will look into different ways of, of um, helping us out whenever they can. If you quote based on system rates, either for local transport or for long distance coaching, they will not be able to guarantee consisting, consistency in terms of coach qualities or even the coaches from the same company. You may end up with Eastern European drivers that will know the normal tourist spots and that's not a problem for leisure groups but you will not get the same knowledge and flexibility or language skills that we need for mice groups where we'd need to be able to change something quickly and we'd need the drivers to be comfortable enough to do that and to do so fast enough without too many arguments. Some of the COVID-19 guidelines similar to the UK, restrictions in 49 seater, the disinfection gel in the entrances and uh, loading of unloading by the driver with disposable gloves. These will be reviewed again every time the government does a press conference, and this is an ever-changing rule that we would do. Here as well, we can brand the water bottles or the seat covers as we could do the same for the UK. 
So now we'll have a look at gift options where Anita will take over. Yes, we have uh, several um, gift uh, options. We uh, presented some, um, we prepared some um, ideas here. So for example, the uh, farmer's scarf uh, with the wooden clock, it is available in a different colors. So colors can be adjusted to the colors of the company. Uh, another uh, great idea is the branded waffle tin. Uh, inside you can find the famous Dutch waffles uh, and then on the can we can put um, a logo of the company. Um, another uh, really nice idea, typical Dutch, is the um, uh, wooden tulip bouquet. Uh, we can customize it uh, with the welcome card or, um, or at the end of the stay a thank you card. Um, there's many, many ideas, uh, many, many gifts that we can offer. Uh, these are just the examples, but of course, it all depends on the on the client wishes. Um, we can uh, customize uh, different uh, gifts uh, as well. Thank you, yes, Anita. Thank you. To give you a quick overview of some of the projects we've done last year, I have included um, Belgium and Luxembourg as well, because they do add on quite a, a lot significantly, which is why we're doing the separate sessions, so we can look at splitting those uh, countries and doing standalone destinations. Various sizes of groups, 270, the largest one we did, uh, and I mentioned yesterday already, 1,800 people was this year um, in October from Thailand um, for AIA. We've done a variety of nationalities, Indonesia, India, Japan, uh, Malaysia, any type, size of group. So we've got a, a world experience in there. But um, I can show you best in a short video. This already brings us to the end of the presentation. I think we really flew through this one. So if you have any questions um, about any of the items, by all means, please do, if anything was unclear.
hello. Hello. Hello, Anneli. Hi. Sorry, I I didn't hear it very clear. I'm、um, I'm not sure whether Netherlands、uh, require license guide for every day. Shall I maybe just answer that one because it was also in my portion? Yeah. yeah so in yeah. the Netherlands, is actually、uh, normally you don't need a license guide.、Uh -huh. uh, only from this year、uh, in Amsterdam, within the Kennel District,、uh -huh. there you need a license guide. Kennel District. So only the Kennel District in Amsterdam. Okay. So in you mean license guide? It doesn't mean. A、uh, license,、uh, how do I say? The Netherlands no. license guide, or the Schengen country license guide. Uh, uh, well, the license is everybody can、uh, request this license.、Uh -huh. So,、uh, like Japanese、uh, guys, like all, like actually all guides.、Uh, but you need to、uh, request this to, to the city council. It's not like in、uh, Italy that you need like a local、uh, license guide. But this is only everybody needs a license. That's that is it. it. But what if what if it's a a French license or an Italian license or some? No, no, no. So to the Dutch,、uh, to the Amsterdam、uh, City Council, you have to request this license. So to the Amsterdam Municipal, you have to request this. So, so it's、oh, not it's it's not that a, a guide has a license, but、uh, it really needs to be from the Amsterdam City Council. Uh, to get this, okay. So it's like the Kernel District is like a a big tour spot, and、uh, the guide. Yeah, it's it's more、uh, to regulate. Um, uh, so uh, really, the big、uh, tourist、uh, mass that we normally have within the Kernel District、mm -hmm. to regulate that. But how to define the Kernel District? If the if the you, tour if you see now. Do, do you see、um, the map uh, now uh, on the presentation? Ah、uh, yes. And you see the、uh, black line there? Yes. On the top、uh, map, within this black line, this is the Kennel District. So within this area,、uh, all guides need a license, and you can、uh, so gui per guide you can have maximum of fifteen、uh, participants.、Okay. You can guide. Okay, I see. So a foreign guide, like. A guide from other country is not going to work at this at this area. It must be a guide、um, with, uh, with a license from the municipal, indeed. Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Can, You're welcome. Sherry, just to add on that, what we've done this year with a group of eighteen hundred people, we、uh -huh. made we made leaflets within that center. So this is also what、um, they've offered in one of the activities is to do like a quiz in smaller teams, so they would still have a chance to visit the areas, but they、uh -huh. would not necessarily need a guide for every fifteen people if you have larger groups. Okay. The area, if if you see the line correctly, at the end where you see the big park, it sort of finishes at the museum square. So up until museum square, you can still have. Any guide, but as long as soon as they cross the the barrier, in that word, that's when the guide、um, limits will apply. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We will also send you、uh, maybe the presentation, and then you can really yeah have a look at the exact area, or you can just send me an email, and then uh, uh, then I will uh, maybe just yeah. Give you the picture. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Because last time I have a, a Netherlands my group and Anneli has already sent me a PPT from maybe of the previous group AIA, but I see today's PPT is more like activities, excursions. So it, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. These are indeed new regulations from this year. Also, it's yeah, it it was changing.、Uh, it has been changing quite a lot. <laughs> Okay, it's great. Yeah, we if we can have the PPT, and then we will learn the,、uh, carefully later. Yes, we will do. Okay. <laughs> thank okay, you. Any, okay. Any other question? If no, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Anata. Thank you, Annalise. It's、so、quite one, clear for us. Sorry, Luke. I can see one、yes. question in the group chat、yes. uh, from Amdudi、uh, asking about Kiton. So Kiton. <laughs> Recommended for mice groups, so it's a bit of a 
a double feeling about it. It's, it's a beautiful area, definitely has the canals. And we, it, we can do it. I mean, we've done it for the group of 1,800 people split over different times. They have a great supplier. They're a great restaurant that can take up to four, 500 people at once. And they provide an excellent service, great food, and they do all the boats as well. The main thing I would say is you have groups that size and you and your group is traveling in peak season or even summer season, you'll cause a traffic jam on the canals. So there will be so many people visiting Heathorn, um, which may not be the best experience for your group if they'd have to, I mean, it's still beautiful, but it, it won't create the same photo opportunities. So later in the year is a better option. You would have more the place to yourself. You do obviously have the weather to consider and that may not always be the best. But we can do it, it's easy enough. So the highlight would be the canals. It's a walkable city center. So they do a, a, they start a cruise on the water, then they will um, drop the group off within the city center or the town center. They'll do a little walk on, on foot and then we can have them picked up a bit further down the, the town center and then continue uh, on the boat. The boat tour will take about 45 minutes to an hour or we can make it longer depending on how much time the group has. Okay, note. Okay, I have no questions. So thank you for your introduction. Let's say goodbye. See you tomorrow. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Yes. Thank bye bye. You. See you. Bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.